All right, Alexander, we've got more turmoil in, uh, in the UK, in the Johnson administration. So um, Boris Johnson and Richie Sunak have said they're not going to self-isolate, and you'll say why. All this isolation talk is taking place, and they've said they're going to isolate, they're not going to isolate, they're going to isolate. I mean, what, what is going on here, Alexander? Get into the context of this story as well. But this is turning out to be a PR disaster for uh, not only Johnson, but Sunak, who was uh, uh, a rising star. Maybe he still is a rising star in the conservative party, but uh, they're not handling this too well with this isolation stuff. So tell us why all of this talk of isolation is taking place. It has to do with the health secretary, et cetera. And the, the way this has been handled from the communications yeah. and PR side of things. I mean, this is a hilarious story in some ways, but it's also an important political one because can I, can I just explain a couple of things in context? First of all, Monday today that we're making this program is supposed to be Freedom Day in Britain. It's where we move away from all the restrictions and those restrictions, instead of being enforced upon us, they supposedly become voluntary. So you're able, no, you no longer have to wear masks, for example. You can choose whether or not you wish to do so. Uh, um, and, you know, the big restrictions supposedly were going to uh, fall away. And part of the reason for this was that, you know, supposedly with most of the population, most of the adult population medicated. We don't need this anymore. And there's a lot of push, especially from business people, to open up, to return to life to normal. And of course, this is also very much a demand for much of the, from much of the population. So that that's the overall context of all of this. Now, what's also happened, however, is that our finance minister, uh, Saeed Javid, uh, um, tested positive with a certain infection that, again, I'm I'm personally still nervous about naming because whatever. And so the question is, do they isolate or do they not? Now, bear in mind, this is supposed to be Freedom Day. So they announced initially that they were not going to isolate or they're going to self-isolate in their own kind of way. And this is all supposedly part of an experiment. The Downing Street itself is running, which is all about... Uh, uh, you know, moving away from the isolation rules, which are anyway becoming essentially voluntary now. That was the whole idea about this. And then there was uproar. There was all the usual people came up and said, this is, you know, irresponsible and wrong. And within uh, 160 minutes, <laughs> they did a complete U-turn and said, well, actually, we're going to uh, 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 self-isolate after all. So they they did a whole switch around. So... A number of points to make here. First of all, we see how unstable this government ultimately is, despite the apparent absence of a large political opposition. I mean, the Labour Party is completely failing to make a big impression. The Conservatives are the, the last poll I saw with their, their 12, 12, 13 points ahead. And yet, in spite of that, at its core, the government is very unstable and it's become very clear. And this is what this episode exposes, that there are two people at the top who are now rivals with each other and who are in conflict with each other. One is the prime minister, who is Johnson. The other is the chancellor, who is Rishi, Rishi Sunak. I've been saying this for some time and they're each manoeuvring for advantage. And at the same time, Neither wants to be in a position where he can be criticised, even covertly, by the other. And so they each go along with what the other is doing. Now, Rishi Sunak has, over the last year or so, positioned himself very much as the person who wants to see freedom return. He, he takes the... I don't know what he really thinks, but he takes the libertarian sort, the more libertarian position, dragging Johnson along. He's always criticised reimposition of restrictions. He was opposing the lockdown. The, he he was opposing the initial the ideas for a lockdown in the autumn of last year. So he's positioned himself as the person who wants to stand for that. That is the more popular policy. 
So Johnson goes along with it. Then, of course, it becomes fairly clear to me that Sunak suddenly realises, well, actually taking that position is going to lose me support with some people in the Conservative Party and especially amongst Conservative Party members, some of whom are elderly and worried and therefore more supportive of restrictive measures than otherwise. So he reverses and then Johnson follows him. He also reverses. So you see how the two, at the same time that they oppose each other, are kind of bound at the hip. It, I, I have to say, I found it at some level very, very funny. But at the same time, it shows how unstable the government is and how even on a simple matter like this, it cannot follow a stable course. You can't have a decision made and people stick with it and then move on with it. So on the one hand, they're opening up, as they say. On the other hand, they're not. On the one hand, they're isolating. On the other hand, they're not isolating. Although maybe they're not isolating and then they're isolating again. Uh, it, it, it's just very confused. And I have to say, I don't tr believe this Freedom Day thing is going to last either. I strongly suspect, indeed I'm quite sure, that in a few months' time, when uh, 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 or a few weeks' time even, we're going to start to see uh, restrictions beginning to be reimposed because the pressures to do that remain incredibly strong. And that is the uh, the crux of the problem right there. Real quick, I think, yeah. um, is is Javid the finance minister or the health secretary? Sorry, sorry, I, I missed, I got that wrong. He's actually the health secretary. Oh, okay. Quite okay. Right. I just he to, used to, to make sure. He, okay. he used to he, be the finance minister. He used to the finance minister, when, by okay. the way, he was manoeuvred out of office and Rishi Sunak took over. The two don't like each other either, by the oh, way. God. This is the other, the other thing. But as I say, he, he, uh, he became uh, uh, um, infected. And so that this supposedly meant that the other two should become, um, should, uh, well, either isolate or not, <laughs> as the case may be. Sounds like high school drama, these, uh, these well, it guys. Is. But <laughs> well, it is. Well, it is. I mean, ultimately, and this is, I think, the underlying point. In in a very important time for Britain, um, we're not led by serious people. I mean, we we've we've just managed Brexit. I, I'm not going to deny Johnson. You know, the fact that he handled the uh, you know the first period of time, uh, the period when he became prime minister. The months after he became prime minister, the original EU negotiations with Macron and Ursula von der Leyen, the withdrawal treaty, the uh, um, election in December 2019. And he handled all that with great political skill. But since then, it's become increasingly clear that there are major problems, that he has major failings as a manager. And now that the big issue of Brexit, you know, the simple. The, the, the big things on Brexit were done. He's losing control of the detail. And of course, it's the detail where they get you. And that's, I think, the problem. And so we see that at the top of power, at the top of the power, structure of power, we see entirely different people starting to assert themselves. And the government at the same time is looking incoherent and disorganized at the time when strong, purposeful government is what the country needs most. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, Boris Johnson is the is the uh, the leader. Sunak is the uh, up and coming cool kid. And so there, there you have the problem. But. I want to get back to, to what you were saying before. The, the real issue here, the crux of the problem that I see it is that, once again, the Boris government, the Boris administration, it doesn't seem like they have a clear path out of the mess that they created. And I guess you could say this for every government around the world. They created this restriction mess. They created the lack of transparency. They created the, um, the confusion in and around a proper policy to deal with this thing. You know, we've been changing from day one. Policies have changed, you know, week by week. And, and now you have this Freedom Day, which looks like it's going to change. And I think that's why both boards, Johnson and Sunak, are kind of trying to figure out, well, which way do we go? Do we isolate? Do we not isolate? 
How do we do this so that we don't piss off the people that we've been pissing off for a good year and a half? How, 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 do, we, how do we do this so that this is not a PR disaster? Because if I decide one thing, I think both Sunak and Johnson are saying this, if I decide one thing today, what if the policy changes tomorrow? Then I'm screwed. And then the people are going to come down hard on me. I mean, there is no proper yeah. plan forward. And that's what's no. causing the confusion. And no. You see it in the way these two guys are, are going at this. Absolutely. And of course, that's just, I mean, that's uh, symptomatic of this particular decision making on this particular issue. But it's true of so many others, too. We don't really have strong leaders anymore. As I said, I don't deny Johnson his political skills, which are real and which played an important role. But he's not ultimately the sort of person who is needed in a time like this. And as for Sunak, I think the more we see of him, the more exposed as a shallow uh, opportunist he becomes. And um, that, that is the reality. That is the reality at the moment. Each of them, as you rightly say, is trying to stay on top of the wave, which they're trying to ride. They don't know which way the wave will turn. They don't know which way the wind is blowing. They go one way one, one day, the other day the next, as they try to avoid putting themselves in a position where they could be criticised. And, of course, ultimately, they will be criticised anyway. And the appearance is not one of firmness and direction, but of weakness and drift. I mean, you know, you get people like DeSantis in Florida who took a line. You may agree with it, you may not, but you start with it. And he's paying the political dividends from he's, he's earning the dividends from that. Um, you don't have anything like that here in Britain or, or indeed in much of Europe, actually. I mean, Merkel, by the way, has also uh, uh, changed policies at the drop of a, of, a, of, a, of a drop of a pin. I mean, you know, she, she also switches from one position to another and then criticizes other people when things go wrong for her. So it's it's a sign of the weakness and amateurism of our of our political leaders at a time, as I said, when Britain particularly needs strong and clear leadership from the centre of power, from, from the government. I mean, Margaret Thatcher used to say, you know, you turn if you want to, the lady's not for turning. <laughs> That's, I mean, I remember that speech. I remember the effect it had, but certainly this, this situation is almost the diametric opposite of that. Is that an effect of, uh, of the fact that leaders today, even uh, Boris Johnson and perhaps Sunak, are serving multiple masters at once? In other words, they don't feel like they're actually serving the, the British people. Um, they're in Absolutely. a way serving the British people, the globalists, the elites, and at many times the globalists and the elites probably take precedent over the British people. Is this the effect of it in that you don't have, a, you don't have Boris Johnson saying, look, this is what we're going to do, A, B, C, and D. Yes, we may change our course, but we are going to try to stay the course. We're going to navigate this through. And if something happens to me, I'm also going to follow these rules. Or, I mean, they're, serving, they're not serving the British people, and that's causing a lot of the confusion. Absolutely right. I mean, that's exactly what the problem is. I mean, bear in mind also, I mean, you know, Britain was part of the EU for, what, 40 years. The EU, as I have repeatedly said, does dislike strong leaders. And, I mean, I don't want to just blame the EU because this is very much a feature of the political system across the globalised West, so that there are no strong leaders a political desert is created. We have a political desert in Britain. You look at the Labour Party, there's no convincing figure ready to come forward there. There's no convincing figure in the, in the Conservative Party. As I said, Sunak, as I said, ha is being increasingly exposed as a shallow lightweight. Now, Johnson, as I said, does have some political skills, but he was not the kind, he's not the sort of person who once upon a time I would have realistically imagined would become prime minister. He was the sort of person I could see as an influential figure on the conservative backbenches, 
whilst the really titans of politics fought it out, you know, at the centre. But there aren't any titans. So in the absence of a titans, people like Johnson sort of advance. But there is no one, there is no one in Britain today who can lead because the system doesn't allow for leaders anymore. And the kind of people who do find themselves in power are not just lightweights, but they are lightweights who exactly, as you said, feel accountable to multiple different constituencies. They worry about what their globalist masters think. They worry about how they will be received in Davos if they go there. And of course, they all want to go to Davos. They all worry about those sort of things. They're, they are, They don't have that instinct for what the British population thinks and wants that politicians in democracies once had and should have. There's no British, there is no British Donald Trump, if I can put it like that. Boris Johnson is sometimes compared to Trump. He's not like, like Trump at all. I, I, I think people who talk about this simply don't understand the difference between the two, which is profound. Yeah. Real quick, you mentioned that uh, things are going to probably change in the next uh, couple of weeks as far as the, uh, the Freedom Day. Yeah. You, yeah. you believe that? I, absolutely. I, I reckon around October, November, the uh, latest. How's that going to affect the economy? <laughs> How's that going to affect the, gonna... the UK and the economy? I mean, realistically, can it absorb more uh, restrictions? I'm choosing my words carefully, but everyone knows oh. what we mean. Quite possibly not. I mean, I, I mean, I, look, I mean, we are a very, very rich country. We have deep financial markets. We are at the center of a big financial services industry. The, the calamity many people were expecting from Brexit. Well, we never took that any of that seriously. And we were right. The economies brushed all that off quite easily. But there is only so much damage you can do before it really starts to hurt. And of course, many people have been hurting for a long time already. But, you know, the, the overall economy has kept going. But I wonder for how much longer, actually. I mean, another year of this will be utterly debilitating. In, in and what, that's... Like, on, on what level? Like debilitating for, for Main Street, for... For the higher up, what to, to what level? Uh, for for the main street, I mean, businesses are now suffering and suffering severely. Remember that in the first period of the pandemic crisis, the government was to some extent subsidising businesses, but it was doing so through loans, and those loans are due to be repaid now. I mean, this is coming up very soon, so we're going to have a, a wall of debt repayments looming on the horizon. Now, that may be smooth to some extent, but that problem exists. Now, if at the same time that those people are repaying those loans, the, gov the, the economy has to start locking down again, that's going to create a massive crisis. And, of course, the government could, in theory, come to the rescue once more, print more money, offer more uh, uh, support. But the economic and financial pressures are making that extremely difficult to do. I mean, the government doesn't have the kind of fiscal space, or at least the, the Treasury says it doesn't have that kind of fiscal space that it did a year ago. So if that's the, if that's the situation, if people are being forced to repay loans in, at, at the very same time that they're being forced to lock down again, well, I mean, we're going to have a recession the like of which we've never seen since the end of the Second World War. I can't see how else uh, uh, things can work out. All right. OK, we'll continue to monitor what's going on. Guys, go to our locals, post your stories on our locals communities. There is no censorship there. You'll find the link down below. Durant Shop, 10% off. Use the code Real News. Pick up a T-shirt, a magic mug. You will find all the information down below. Take care.